Good morning and happy Sabbath. I do believe after our last week's storm and all the consequences, how many people suffer, we see our life a little bit different. At least we should. Because God bless us so much. With the main thing is your life is extended, is protected. God preserved you for a reason. A second, you did not have a problem with your health. And third, you have a power which many people don't have it till now. Your property was not damaged. There's so many things to be thankful for and uh, compare and contrast always help us to see the things better. And the things, uh, the reason that you're sitting here uh, on this, I would say, comfortable chairs, because God loves you and He wants to teach you one more lesson today. In our previous Sabbaths we had a study, we actually we in, in a series of studies about priorities. Priority that what would determine where we're gonna hit, where we're gonna come, what is where is our destination? Because there's so many things, and uh, Satan wants us to get confused with the priorities and set up them in the wrong way. And uh, reading the Bible, coming to church, that's the best way to set up your priority in right order. That's what you're doing, and may God bless you and give you strength for that. Last Sabbath we were talking about the what we were talking about? Lot's wife. Lot's wife. Short verse. Very short. Remember Lot's wife. As we said it, nothing said about the uh, Abigail, Anna, many other godly women, women, but about this one, God said, remember. What did she do so special that we have to remember her? She looked back. She looked back. The main lesson is that she had all privileges. She'd been tough. She'd been worshiping God with Abraham. She was disposed to so many things. And she decided slowly to change her mind. And she never reached the goal or destination where she was going to. Even the angels were working hard on her. She didn't want it. This is a great lesson for us. It's a, a strong warning that you can be sitting in these pews and these yes. chairs and still looking back yes. in Egypt. May God help us not to do the same thing. Priorities. Today we are going to talk about some this in the same line but in different things. About different things. As you heard the uh, scripture reading was taken from Peter. We are going to talk about inner beauty. We display many things. In our bodies, we're trying to adorn them. When we're getting older, we're trying to hide the wrinkles, use some colors, some paint, many, many things. I'm not going in details. We're wasting hours, hours, which could be way spent for godly reasons, just to shape and adorn <coughs> Weak, sinful. <coughs> what the Bible have to say about that? But before we move with that, do you know, the, uh, are you familiar with the, this expression, the word oxymoron? Yeah. What is it? It's a two words that contradict each other. For example, black light. <laughs> pretty ugly. <laughs> or pretty or ugly. It cannot be pretty ugly. And uh, military intelligence. I don't see how military can be intelligent. Criminal justice, civil disorder, or rap music. Rap never was a music. Well, maybe uh, I was talking to Alex, he said maybe it's categorized as music, but it never, <laughs> there's no music in it. But still, people, people are using this. How about this one? It's more serious. How about this? Little sin. Does it sound good? No, but I don't say it. Or sin, or no sin. There is no such a thing. Sin, a little or big one. Innocent gossip. I never heard the two. The people are using this expression. Going further, new even. Um, Christian rock. If it's rock, it cannot be Christian, no? Christian jewelry. 
Christian jury. Oh, wow. Cannot be there, or yes or no. How can the Christian jury be Christian when the Bible strongly admonishes believers not to worry? Clearly. It's a conflict in terms. Uh, the fashion has been described by some as a small issue. We, someone said, we have so many problems in the church. Why do we have to talk about that? That's little things we should not pay attention. There will be more projects has to go on. We have, we have to pay attention on much more important things. How about Luke 15, Luke 16, 15? What did Jesus say here? Remember what Jesus says. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Even though you consider this as a little things because you used to do it so often that doesn't sound to you anymore so badly, so bad. But God said, even though you treat this as a normal, but for me it's abomination in the sight of God. Of God. I, I believe this, this Bible verse is, is very clear. It's very clear. And uh, we sometimes change the things or give them different estim estimation. If you go to Second King chapter 18 verse 4, the king Hezekiah who was working so hard, he was godly man, and he did so much for God, and all of a sudden, he destroyed some sacred object. Sister, Sister uh, Teresa, would you 18 read 18.4. 18 18.4, yeah. <clears throat> what was that sacred object? He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He destroyed the bronze serpent. When Moses, do you know what was the meaning of it, no? Yeah. When they put them, that bronze serpent on the pole, yeah. everybody who looked over it was healed. Yeah. Nothing was wrong with it. But here, something happened. They began to worship. They make an idol from it. Anything, my dear brother, even the good things, if you make an idol from it, it's abomination. It's not pleased to God. Anything. We'll, we'll talk more about that in these few uh, moments what we have. Matthew 7.20. Matthew 7.20. Next one. Matthew 7.20. I would like young people also open their Bibles, whatever they have in, in their hands, and read for us Matthew 7.20. Matthew 20. Matthew 7. Chapter 7, verse 20. Go ahead, Sister Victoria. Wherefore, by thy fruits ye shall know them. Amen. How the people will know us? By roots or by fruits? By fruits. <laughs> because we say God is not looking on, on my appearance. He is looking to my heart, in my heart. That is true, but God says here that He is going to judge us by fruits. Yes. What we display, what we do, how we act, <coughs> how we speak. If you uh, turn your bulletin on the back side, on the first paragraph there, child guidance, who wants to read that, that, that paragraph? <coughs> Stephanie? The top one, correct? Right? Yeah, the first one. Yeah. The dress. The dress and its arrangement upon the person is generally found to be the index of the man or the woman. We judge of a person's character by the style of dress worn. A modest, godly woman will dress modestly. A refined taste, a cultivated mind, will be revealed in a choice of simple, appropriate attire. The one who is simple and unpretending in her dress and her manners show that she understands that a true woman is characterized by moral worth. How charming, how interesting is simplicity in dress, which in comeliness can be compared with the flowers of the field. Thank you. 
Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. The power of the gospel begins on the inside, transforming the heart while unseen by human eyes. But then it continues to flow and um, seen into every area of uh, the life, producing obvious external changes. Just like a plant, the seed first come to life below the earth. But in the root is healthy. If the root is healthy, the plant will soon become visible and bear fruit above the ground. So do you, my dear brother, and if you have a healthy seed, if you have a healthy uh, soil, it will produce good fruits. And the uh, Apostle Paul uh, warned Titus of those who profess that they know God but in work they deny him Titus 1 16 it says in words they deny we can profess verbally in our lip service but that's not enough for for him to accept us James goes further 2 18 is in a crystal clear that the relationship rooted in Jesus will produce external evidence he a man, a man may say Thou hast faith, and I have work. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Both, we need both. That doesn't work like that. You, can, you cannot be a Christian in your heart without showing an out, uh, its outside. Is it clear up to here? Yes. The root, root has to be grounded in and spread up the good fruit. If its root, roots are corrupted or any wild seed there, the same fruits. We cannot get apple from pear tree, even here at the church. We expect to have a pear. In Revelation chapter 12 and 16, the two women are portrayed there. Two different women. As you know, the church uh, is represented also by a woman. In Revelation 12, one who wants to read that one for us, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Two women, Sister Donna. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And ver chapter 17, verse 14, just to compare. Seventeen four. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Ah, such a great contrast. By contrast, the second woman who represents the apostate church is decorated with a jewelry, jewelry and fine apparel. Her beauty is external, artificial. There's nothing, nothing natural is there. Obviously, these uh, things are associated with an appearance of evil, and we are command, commanded to abstain from all appearance of evil, according to 1 Thessalonians 5.22. In Matthew 5.16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you see any light is coming from the second one? Not much. She just display what she has. And the first one, <coughs> let's just go over again. Uh, great water in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her had a crown of twelve stars. It, everything is natural. Whatever God gave her, that's what she has. She had a sun, she had a moon, nothing was putting artificial on her body. So do we today. God wants us to be plain as it is. I like this expression what the Eleanor Roosevelt said, no matter how plain a woman may be, it uh, if truth and honesty are written across her face, she will be beautiful. Yeah. Eleanor Roosevelt, no matter how plain she is, or maybe, if the 
truth and honesty. That would be sufficient. Uh, 1 Timothy, let's move to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Inner beauty. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Who is that one? <laughs> Yes. You said first Timothy? First Timothy chapter two, verses nine and ten. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Amen. That's all what God requires from us. Nothing will would take attention to some of someone, or nothing would cost more money than it needs to. That's only. We'll talk more about that. I want to uh, share with you the story that I read. That was year 1540, 16th century. The town of was Geneva, Switzerland. The minister, the old man, was preaching to his congregation, and he was preaching from First Peter chapter three about the uh, inner beauty, verse 3 and 4 in all those uh, <coughs> verses. And he was saying that even in those times, just look at yourself, men dress up as a young woman as though they grieve over the fact that God has not made them women. And women dress as glorious rainbows, trying to catch the glance of men. The Father hates all immodesty, of body and soul. Here goes the Protestant Calvin again. There was John Calvin. Down all those rules that makes life boring, some people believe so. And there was a voice from the congregation, tell us sir, how should we dress? The voice was that of the shopkeeper. His apparel uh, uh, would have made a peacock envious. And the answer to that question, uh, Calvin did, said like this, In clothing that simply protect you from the cold and heat. The question was, how should we dress? And the answer, in clothing that simply protect you from the cold and heat. Shot back Calvin. The congregation fell silent. What sort of standard was that for the fashion conscience? Had this Calvin no sense of fabric or texture? I don't think so. He knew what he was talking about. He knew. Calvin was reacting to the secular spirit which prevailed in the 16th century in Geneva. He was living among a stubborn, worldly bunch who resisted the will of God. Week after week he preached to, to pews uh, filled with uh, peacocks who were um, Preoccupied with the world rather than the world. I don't think anything changed today, maybe even worse. Maybe even worse. I want to read another research what was made today about the young people, teenagers. Two races. They were talking, they make a research between white and black. Let's just just to listen. Just listen. There were there was a lifestyle uh, article entitled The Body of the Beholder. The main point of the article, a new study, shows that the white girls dislike their bodies, but black girls are proud of theirs. Newsweek, April 24, 1995. <coughs> the typical white girl says, you can never be too thin. According to one 16 years old, girl says, I'm so fat, I'm so ugly. To me, the ideal is stream and strong, athletic, but not too strong. <coughs> Peter would not be impressed with this. In fact, he would not uh, hesitate to lecture anyone who talks this way. In contrast, the typical black girl says, size doesn't matter if you have got the right attitude. Whoa, I thought the author says, those black girls have it right. But then I read further. It's what you wear, they say, how, you, yeah, how your hair is done, and how you put it together. Peter would not be impressed with this either. Again, he would not hesitate to lecture anyone who talks this way. My dear brother, it doesn't matter what you think, what you say, uh, you should stick what the Bible says. Let's go first Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. 
First Peter chapter three verses three and four. Chapter three. Three and four. Yes. Who's adorning? Let it, who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of cleaning the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Okay. Uh, the Apostle Peter was a brave man. He was not scared to lecture Christian women on the object of beauty. And uh, there is no many preachers today who are willing to preach about that. They kind of afraid the congregation will run away from there if they're going to present this message. To all Christian women, especially wives and mothers, mothers, Peter says, your beauty should not come from outward adorn, such as braided hair and wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. Let us put in contemporary language how, how it sounds today. Peter says, beauty does not come from the tree to the hairdresser salon or training salon or fitness club. Peter says beauty does not depend on new outfit with a matching shoes and, and purse. Peter says beauty does not re rely on makeup and skin cream. Peter says beauty does not come from a bottle or, or jar, jar. Peter says beauty does not require hair dryer or curling iron. Beauty according to Peter does not even depend on the size or and weight. It's a great message, my dear What are you trying to pursue in your life? What are you trying to display? What are you trying to show? How you like to um, um, kind of uh, impress the people around you? Whom you want to impress, first of all? For whom you are living on this earth? Uh, does God dislike or he doesn't like uh, precious stones? He likes them. In Revelation 21, verses 19 to 21, we read, And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. He likes it, but not hanging on our bodies. Period. He likes them, because he made it. Just think about that, if Adam and Eve were walking on the Garden of Eden, they found a gold, and... Can you imagine that he would put something on her body? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It makes us laugh, and that is true. Uh, all those symbols, all those uh, necklaces and uh, uh, jewelries, they were dedicated to gods, to certain gods, in Asia, in Africa, and some other areas. People are punched their ears. They are punch their nose, eyebrows, lips extend. They even uh, put a bone through their nose. It's so ugly pictures. Why? Why we are today in 21st century having a clear knowledge about what God likes, how he wants us to be, uh, repeating the same things here. Don't you think that God did not make enough holes in your body? That you have to make some extra? I don't think so. I don't think so. He made them right, just right amount of it. You don't have to help him to do it. The tradition in India, the married woman, she's supposed to have a, a, a ring in her nose. And somehow attached to her ear with a chain. It's so... Horrible. First of all, it's painful, it's not convenient, it's not practical, let me put it this way. It's not practical at all. And today people are uh, piercing their body all over the places. I'm not going into those details, but it's shame. It's a shame. But they are shameless today to do that. I remember when we just got here to this country, I went to the store or somewhere, I don't remember the exact place, Anyway, I get to the lady, she was on the uh, front desk, and uh, I asked some questions. I did not know as much as I know now in English, but then even less. And she had a uh, piercing in her tongue. <laughs> she barely could talk. 
what is for just think about my, my situation I was in a very bad shape then I, I couldn't <laughs> I barely understood anything from her it's not only about that there's more more than that it's more than that uh, Revelation 317 God says because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou wretched miserable poor white and naked God does not tell you to wear the cross he said bear the cross Amen. Amen. this is the difference Amen. this is the difference God wants you to uh, not to put gold outside of your body but try to do from inside out jumping a little bit ahead I'll have this a little bit later but I wanted to share it now when the Solomon built its magnificent temple, even people cry after that for many centuries when it was destroyed, but that's a different subject. And uh, the beauty of it was that different was from others. From outside was just white marble, nothing else. And all gold was inside. Does it tell you anything? From outside was just simple marble without any attraction that much but inside was covered with gold so do we should be today our bodies our souls has to be covered with the gold from inside it will resemble it will reflect the God's beauty not just put on you I'm not saying that we should be I have ugly or dirty clothes not about that but Unfortunately, young people today, rem not only young people, uh, remember today, they know very well about Gucci, Armani, Chanel, Bossy, then, then Bible books, how they in order, how they go. So, unfortunately, we remember those things better than, than what we should. And uh, in your bulletin, uh, the third short paragraph, the world must not be introduced into the church and married to the church, forming a bond of unity. Through this means the church will become indeed corrupt, and as stated in Revelation, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. We cannot allow these things coming to the church. We should guard the gate. Uh, those who are in church and gently remind. I'm not saying that we should go and hammer people around, but we should ex explain uh, to people what is the priority that it should be. And not only are we offending God, but we are at the same time we are a stumbling block for our brethren around. First Corinthians chapter eight, twelve. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter eight, verse twelve. There? Anybody? 812, 1 Corinthians? Just recording. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye mm. sin against Christ. That's not only against Christ. You are pushing your brother close to Satan. Because you are a stumbling block. For someone, maybe alcohol uh, drinking here and there would be okay. But someone who would start, they will never stop. Why should you provoke them or be a stumbling block for them? The same thing with anything like jury or anything like that. And uh, people many times uh, from the statistic, from the research, they use this artificial adornment because they they feel not they're not worthy they want to improve their worthiness to this world to people who are around them they want to prove because they are empty inside they feel uh, insecure that's why they're trying to display from outside kind of like protect themselves show at least to to prove it i know people who are very Okay, they are poor, but they drive a luxury car. Why? Because they want to impress. They, want, they don't want people to see that they don't have. 
they want to show and prove that they are at the same level. Don't compete with people, you will never be successful, my dear brother. And it's always someone who has more than you are, you do. Why you should waste your money, waste your time, waste your talent. One of the reasons, it's a personal world. And um, others believe they are unattractive and hope to increase their persuade beauty by adorning themselves with the beautiful gems. They cannot control themselves. They think that if one is good, then ten would be better. It doesn't work like that, because some people will, well, what is the problem? Just one little earring. Okay, if you say so, why, uh, okay, why one? If the one is okay, why not two? If two, why not more? And if it's okay for a woman, for a woman, why is not okay for a man? Mm -hmm. If it's okay for a man, for a layman, men, why is not okay for clergy? Mm -hmm. Tell me the difference. What is the where's the boundary? <clears throat> Bible is very clear on that. Do not step even on that prohibited territory. Don't start even to do that. Don't even think about that. Amen. The prophecy is very clear. Let the fashion change and convenience would no longer be mentioned. It is, a, it is the duty of every child of God to inquire, wherein, wherein am I separate from the world? Let us suffer a little inconvenience and be on the safe side. What clothes do God's people bear? They mingle with the world, partake of their spirit, dress, talk, up like them. Set. Very sad, very sad. When enough is enough, where is the boundary as I said? Body piercing is very common today. It's completely against the Bible. I want to give you a couple of Bible verses for you to know uh, for yourself and for people who will ask you. Leviticus 19.28 Leviticus 19.28 it was given to sons of Aaron, but since we are living in a day of autonomy, we all are a royal priesthood according to 1 Peter 2 9. Levit Leviticus 19 28. Anybody? You shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the uh, dead, nor print any marks on, upon you. I am the Lord. Is it clear or is it not? Mm -hmm. yeah. No cutting. No printing means no tattoo. No tattoo. I'm so sorry today. I'm looking, I'm watching people. I cannot turn my eyes from everyone. The tattoo is all over the body. And not only young people, even in middle age, they, they're there. I'm so sorry. I just don't know what these people think about that. I was talking to one young lady, and she was 18 or so. She had already tattooed somewhere here on her shoulder. I ask her, how about your parents? What did they say? Oh, they okay, they all have tattoos too. <laughs> they just tell me, don't come pregnant home, that's it. <laughs> See, that, that's what's coming from where. And um, pagan tradition, nothing else, is nothing to do with the living God. First King chapter 18, 28, when um, prophet Elijah was about to prove that God is a real God, and he gave a chance to those pagan people, pagan uh, priests, to perform their service first. And when their God, their God was delayed, they try, they start. What, what did they do? For, first, uh, Sister Teresa, you were about to read last time. I just First Kings 1828. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances, till the blood gushed out upon them. What does that tell you? It has nothing to do with the living God, my dear brother, when people cutting and doing anything to their bodies. Mark 5, 5. And always night and day, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. We're talking about the um, possessed with the demons. And Satan is the one who... Uh, inspirator for that he was initiator he is pushing people to do that in reality when people do do those things to their body they serving him nobody else they serving satan they have to know about that and uh, 
Deuteronomy chapter 14 verses 1 and 2. I need a reader for that one. No, 14 verses 1 and 2. More some, some more instruction there. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Mm. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. All of all nations that are upon the earth. Mm. If you, yes, it's not. What does that mean, bones between your eyes? Oh, they shave, they shave special way. They, there was a kind of tradition, they shave special way. When you read about the Samson, uh, those people with whom he was mingled, they were shaved. Only Samson had a long hair. That was so uh, unusual for him to be among them. If you look at the Egyptians, even through the movies, if you want, all of them shaved. People of Israel never. Even God gave instruction, do not trim the sides of your beard. Just leave it as it is, natural. And uh, the original purpose for clothing, as we talked about that, was to uh, cover the nakedness of our parents. Adam and Eve never would have dreamed of hanging gold or silver on their bodies to accent their fig leaves. <laughs> there, was, there was already shameful what they did. Clothing was for modesty and to protect them from changing climate. Someday God will place a golden crowd of victory on the brow of the overcomers. Yet, Amen. even then, the saved will remove their golden crown yeah. in the God's presence. Amen. It's not one Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. We're not reading, just I'm giving you the reference. It's not wonderful. Moreover, I want us to read this. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16 and... Let's read a little bit more. 16 to 23. Uh, Sister, Gila, Sister Marie Gillard, would you read this? Chapter 3, verse... Uh, chapter 3... Ver, uh, 16 and 23? Yes, please. Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretch, stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tingling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. And that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their coils and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crisping pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, thou shalt be stink, and instead of girdle, instead of a girdle, 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 girdle a rent, and instead of a stumbler, a girdle of sackcloth. Uh, instead of well set their baldness, and instead of the stumbers, the girdles, and sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. The men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. Thank you. A woman in the Bible prophecy symbolizes a church. In this prophecy, the woman Churches were to be severely judged because of their pride, which is directly connected with this external adornment. Many times we are so proud about ourselves that we have no limit for that. We're going over and over and over, we begin to believe that we are so. I heard this story about the woodpecker. He was digging the hole in the wood, and all of a sudden the lightning hit the strike the, the uh, tree and split in two. And the poor bird f 
fly away and say, well, look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's what who we are. Maybe it's, it's kind of that way, but that's it is. That's exactly what it is in our life. And uh, supreme goal of a Christian. The supreme goal of a Christian to attract attention to Christ, not to self. Amen. Decorating our mortal bodies with um, glittering gems and minerals <coughs> usually spring from pride and <coughs> diametrically opposed to the spirit of the principle of Jesus. Matthew 23, 12, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Pride of her parents uh, was a large factor in Lucifer's fall and rebellion. We're not going through that. We don't have time for that. But I can tell you what the sister Mary read. And soon, soon, very soon, would be liquidation sale, according to Isaiah 2.20. In that day, man shall cast his idols of silver, his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to their moles and to their bats. You say, no, I'm the, I have no idols. Yes, you do. If you have here, 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 somewhere. Simple question. Would Jesus do that? We know that he was here for three and a half years. Jesus is the best example. He never spent penny for some luxury stuff. He never spent extra time for not helping people. And we are so zealous today. We are so determined to live for ourselves, to uh, adorn our body and to please ourselves and and compete. We are trying to, to uh, um, outdo one each other. True. Competition. That's why people getting more in debt and that's why we have all these things. We can say, oh that's not gold, that's cheap uh, plastic. Okay, why you do that? <laughs> Even though you don't want to say nobody that is plastic, but why are you doing that? <laughs> and uh, before last, we are kind of short of time. This study is very large, it's not enough for one study only. Dressing all for the occasions. There was a time when God winked uh, at the wearing of jewelry and other evils such as slavery and polygamy. It was not because He approved of these practices, but because his people had bigger problems to deal with at that, uh, that point of the time. Acts 17, 30 and 31. Acts 17, 30 and 31. Acts 17, 30 and 31. We know that God never judged you for something which you did not know. Here. Sister Victoria, can you read that one? In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Amen. Amen. And uh, we are living in the days just before the coming of uh, Jesus. A time in which the church is being judged. For the times is come, the judgment must begin at the house of God. First Peter 4, 17. The judgment will begin from you, me, and all of us here first. And uh, when God wants to meet His people for a special occasion, we can read this in Genesis chapter 35, verses 1 and 4. Sister Donna, can you read for us those verses? When, um, after... J Jacob's sons mess up with, actually start with his daughter after his sons. J Genesis 35, 1 through 4. And God sent him some in some other place. Let's read about that. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar to God that appeared unto thee when thou fled us from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments, and let us arise and go out to Bethel. And I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way in which I went. And they gave Jake unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, 
and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shech Shechem. And when they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Thank you. We can learn two very important lessons from this story. First, notice that the foreign gods and jury were classified and buried together. There was no difference. Because most of the juries were dedicated to some gods. We know that Rachel, what did she do? You know, she st steal from her father and she carry with her. But when you know the jury in those times were the payments they use as the money. You know, the Eliezer, she, he took a bracelet and gave to future wife of Isaac. And there was the money. The people did not have the printed money as we do have now, but that's how they uh, make a trade. And uh, God wants us to learn those, these, these lessons. And uh, in order of Jacob and his household to commune with God, they had to abandon all such influence. Does God order Jacob to make not a temporal removal of the article, but permanent burial? It doesn't mean that after worship they came back and uh, they dig it and put it back. That's a serious question, my dear brethren. What are you doing when you are out of this place? How you dress your body? I know that you have some respect to this place. Even though we should pay more attention to this, please do not come to this place as you are coming to your job or to the beach. Amen. This is a wrong, wrong attitude. We don't want you to receive the curse instead of blessing. We don't want the curse will come upon this church as well. That's why we are going to protect this place from all this abomination, I would say. And uh, the more than that, uh, when you are, uh, I remember when Alex got a job, he told his mom, I have to get a uh, couple pair of pants. And she said, why did you have it? No, they, they not allowed me to go there in jeans. Oh, okay. It's a good lesson. Mm -hmm. If they are not allowed you to go in jeans, <laughs> what about this place? There are some places when you cannot go and just in common dress. You have to have certain style. And I don't think, I don't believe, I strongly don't believe that any other place are more reverent than, 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 than this place. If those people are, uh, have this kind of requirement to their employees, how about God? Amen. That's what he says. That's what he says. A few more thoughts in, the, in conclusion. We are the temple. We all know that, no? Uh, God says that you are temple of God and we have to serve Him with all our means. And uh, your beauty should reside not in outward adornment, the braiding of, of the hair, as Peter said, jewelry or dress, but in the inmost center of, the, of your being with an imperishable ornament, ornament a gentle, quiet spirit, which is of a high value of the sight of God. I, I have no comment of this because that's self-explained. Uh, don't try to improve our human appearance by poking holes or putting some paint on it. It doesn't work. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And, uh, a few questions what I want you to remember or write it down. What kind of questions we must answer before wearing any clothing? Number one, question number one. All the time ask yourself before you put anything on your body. Question number one. Does it, perm does it uh, remind me of my calling? Does it remind me of my calling? Whatever you put, whatever. Black, okay, what? white. Calling. 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 Does it remind me of my calling? Question number one. Number two. We skip some verses, but this this question can summarize it. Number two. Does it separate from the world? Is it separate from the world? The, the things what I'm going to wear. Is it separate from the world? Number three. 
Does it promote physical health? And number four, does it promote moral health? Health, or is it modest? Four question. What was the third one? Does it promote physical health? And the fourth one, does it promote moral health? Is it modest? I do believe this sermon will not maybe going to change just like that in one day, but we are praying that God will impress you with the Holy Spirit and makes you to go in your closet and uh, get rid of some pieces of clothes. And I pray that God will uh, work at your conscience and you will come here in different dress than you were dressing to today. Amen. This is our duty, my dear brother. This is God's place. We cannot uh, defile this place with our wrong appearing here. Um, this is one of many things, important things, that make us come close to Jesus Christ, to be more like Christ and less like this world. Romans 13, 14, But put ye on the Lord Jesus, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the last thereof. Romans 13, 14, and Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. May God bless you and me together with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.